Mr. Matthews, Mr. Deepak, Chairman of the Telecom Commission, Mr. Joshi, Honorable R.P. Singh, Chief Guest, Honorable Jitendra Singh, Mr. Daheria, Dignitaries, Distinguished Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen, Greetings. It is indeed a special privilege for me to be with you via video at this AG's Graham Bell Award Ceremony 2017. I want to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity. It is a special privilege also to be with my telecom community in India. I remember working with many of you. I miss my association and the opportunities I had and I want to thank everybody for the support they have given and the journey I had. I started my journey in telecom in 1980 when I gave a presentation to Mrs. Indira Gandhi, then Prime Minister, and mentioned the fact that telecom and IT would change the face of India. That was just about 36 years ago. Then we had roughly 2 million telephones for 650, 700 million people. It used to take 10 years to get a telephone connection. In a short span of this three decades, today India has a billion telephones. And we are a nation of a connected one billion. A lot of this credit goes to political will of people like Rajiv Gandhi, support of our young talented people, support of large number of professionals, contribution of private sector, public sector, and all of us working together have been able to really create essentially a miracle. It is good to remember today Alexander Graham Bell. He was born in 1847, just about 96 years before I was born. He died in 1922, 20 years before I was born, and he got a patent on telephone in 1876. He worked very hard to get his instrument into public. Those were early days of electricity and it took long time to really get telephone to become a consumer device. It took almost 115 years to get to about billion phones in this world. And most of the phones were in rich countries. I remember growing up in telecom, we used to say that if you have lots of telephones, you are bound to be rich. And if you are rich, you are bound to have lots of telephones. Then cost per line used to be about $1,000 a line for a long, long time. Then came mobile telephones and cost per line went down from a couple of thousand dollars 2,000 to 500 to 200 and finally it hit below 100. As soon as it hit below 100, we added in 15 years 7 billion more phones. And that is the miracle of affordability leading into scalability and sustainability. 
Today, mobile talak phone is everywhere, not just in India, in Africa, Latin America, rural areas, urban areas, with rich, with poor. And it has become an instrument of lifestyle management. It is no longer just about talking on telephone. It is about managing your lifestyle, e-payment, e-commerce, surfing through web. All of this has been possible because smartphone and web and internet all came together. Internet has essentially changed everything. It has changed business models, delivery systems, products, services, and it is going to have far-reaching implications on everything we do today and everything we will do tomorrow. So the real challenge for all of us today is to take telecom and IT and internet and web and smartphones and connectivity to the next level. So far we have used telephones to just talk and do a little bit of data functions. But in the future, everything we do is going to change completely. But there are two real pieces to that puzzle. One is the infrastructure. What kind of infrastructure we are going to build today for the integrated communications challenges of tomorrow? Today's infrastructure requires robust connectivity and we know that with billion phones in India, quality of service needs little more attention. Connectivity also is not up to the mark in rural areas. So as part of the infrastructure, real challenge today is connectivity. How do we connect large number of remote areas to high capacity broadband networks? About a decade ago, we launched a program on knowledge network to connect 1500 nodes with 4 gigabit bandwidth to connect all of our universities, libraries and R&D institutions. It has worked well and now the key is to really use that effectively by developing local applications, local content and creating local business models to expand our knowledge base. Then we need connectivity to panchayats and for that we launched a program, what we used to call NOFN, now it is called Bharat Network or Bharat Broadband. The idea was to connect 250,000 panchayats to optical fiber. We already had then about a million kilometer of optical fiber and our goal was to add another half a million kilometer. Program was supposed to be done in three years, never got done on time lot of bureaucratic bottlenecks in spite of the fact that we had all the funding we just couldn't organize working together with BSNL, Railtel, Power Grid to build the kind of network we needed to build in three years. I am told that work is continuing but we need to expedite it. Fortunately, the program for UID, Aadhaar, really became very successful and we have been able to issue almost billion unique identification cards, numbers, to our residents and citizens. This is one of the largest success stories in telecom IT in India. So beside connectivity and UID, we need platforms for GIS. We did a cabinet note, got a cabinet approval, but GIS work has also been slow. So if we need a number to identify a person, we also need IP address to identify physical location. And that was the idea behind GIS. Then we need applications 
lot of applications for e-governance areas, passport, driver's license, police, computerization of courts. There are hundreds of things like this that need applications and we had identified 30 major applications in the government. Then we need data centers, cyber security, all of these things related to platforms are key to building infrastructure of tomorrow. Digital India then will become a reality. Digital India is not about websites and tweeting and Facebook accounts. Digital India is not about social networks. Digital India is about robust information infrastructure to democratize information. Digital India is about empowering people. Digital India is about open government. Digital India is about transparency. And a lot of this requires change in mindset. We cannot build Digital India with the old processes, old programs. For example, in e-governance, I have said for all, all, almost over a decade that there is no sense in computerizing age-old processes left behind by British Raj. We need to redesign processes. Take for example court cases. We have something like 32, 30 million court cases pending. We have the technology. Can we really use this digital technology to reduce time to justice from maybe 10, 15 years to 3? And that requires change in mindset. That requires us to use new tools, new technology in an effective way to really deliver citizen services to people. Governance is a major challenge in digital India. We also focused earlier on creating several portals, water portal, energy portal, portal on environment. If you get a chance, I request you to look at some of these portals where we have huge amount of information, but very few people really access it. Because information is available as knowledge. Unfortunately, very few people use it. So Digital India would be very effective and meaningful for a country like India when our young begin to benefit from it, create new jobs, innovate, create new opportunities and solve problems differently. We need more entrepreneurs in Digital India to really solve problems using new tools and new technology to benefit large number of people at the bottom of the economic pyramid. We talk about social innovations. We talk about social entrepreneurs. I think social entrepreneurs and social innovation has a lot to do with using digital technology to do things differently. What is the role of digital technology in agriculture, in food, in water, in sanitation? These are tough questions. And answers really lie in Indian way of doing things and not necessarily in the Western way of doing things. The real challenge from my perspective now is to use Digital India, Telecom, IT to transform education. It is not but about using Digital India or digital technology to digitize our textbooks and keep our exams the same way and learn to remember things as opposed to learn to solve problems. So education needs to go through total transformation. I have always said that unfortunately when we think of education today, we assume that it is all about duster, blackboard, chalk, teacher, textbook, exams, grades and certificate. All of that changes in digital environment. It is more about learning at your own pace. 
it's about a completely different model of learning, which is focused more on self-learning with motivation, time and content and not about broadcast way of learning. Today we still have broadcast mode of learning, but we have new tools. So there is a disconnect. Same with health services. Same with governance. So I see a huge need for generational transformation in India to be able to use digital technologies. We are all lucky to be living in best of the best times in the human history. Connectivity has changed human societies all over the world. In fact, a lot of the tension that I see today in the world also has to do with knee-jerk reaction to global connectivity. Now that all 8 billion people are connected, how do we relook at the world? Earlier we were not connected. Now do national boundaries make sense? Do we really need to be looking at world very differently? More as a holistic monolithic mass? Do digital technologies have impact on environment? These are tough questions that we haven't even started asking yet. But I am so excited about the potential that telecom and IT offers. I am equally excited about the fact that today you are celebrating Alexander Graham Bell Award Ceremony. I want to compliment all of the award winners. I want to wish them all the best and I want to recognize their contribution. Every drop adds up. I know IT and telecom will make a bigger difference in India, provided we begin to change our mindset. We need to be much more open, transparent, honest, sincere, networked, connected, democratized, decentralized, because these are the real pillars of information technology. To me, information is the fourth pillar of democracy beside judiciary, the legislation and executive. How do we really use this fourth pillar of democracy to empower everybody, to bring equality, equity, expand, excel? These are the real challenges. Technology is one piece of the puzzle. And I hope a lot of our young could join this journey and really make a difference in the lives of large number of people who are at the bottom of the economic pyramid. I had a very interesting journey in India in my effort to connect India. It started almost 35 years ago. I've written a book on it called Dreaming Big. If you get a chance, have a look at it. And that will tell you a little bit about what it takes to get something like done in a complex country like India. In a sense, one part of the journey has finished. We are connected. But the real big piece of the journey begins now. And that has to do with what do you do with the connectivity? Now that you are connected, are you really going to transform India in a big way in the next 20 years? Good luck.